Well, that's good. We're outside. On a beach. And there it was. Newport Colony. A shell of its former self in my eyes. Blazing across the Atlantic against the cloudy night sky. I knew I had reached my goal at last. And that my answers resided here. Here in Newport. Alright, let's head over to Newport then. Find out what the hell's going on. Follow the lanterns! Do we have to swim though? I don't want to swim. Maybe there'll be a boat. And then I heard it. The screaming, the crying, the explosions. Flashes of light silhouetted the smoke against the horizon. And it was then that I realized Newport was still alive, still under siege. My journey ahead was to be enormously difficult, but even on those beaches, I had not the faintest idea of the destruction you brought, Gray. Okay, convenient. Time for another book. His judgment seems so careless. Oh, oh, how I wish to go with him to South America, and how useful I could have been to him. He is foolish to assume I do not have proper experience in venturing there before. I have been in his shoes, trying fruitlessly to discover the ancient Mayan secrets entombed for centuries among the sick jungles. But he would not take me, insisting the trip was too dangerous. At least there is comfort to be had in Alan Marsh accompanying him, even if I do not like or trust that man. He will be gone for two years on his expedition, and I know how little I shall hear from him. I resign myself to loneliness, and will take up further study of the fable of Tigras to occupy my time. Certainly! Alright, well let's go save Newport. Or attempt to. Right, so we're on a different part of the island because... When I woke up originally in part one, the lighthouse was to my left. As I recall, so... Let's see where we end up. Remember that from the trailer? <laughs> I was wondering how that was going to play out, but it's just uh, automated. I thought there was going to be puzzle solving with trying to pick up a piece of wood and haul in the boat. <laughs> but nope. Off we go. probably take the tarp off the top of the boat so I can see out the other side. Alright, well here we are at Newport. Before the start of our story. No it's not, it's after the start of our story. 
My timing is very weird. I'm not entirely sure if this is after we wake up in Newport or if this is before. I think it's after. I guess it's after. It's very strange. Whatever. Let's find out what's going on. There I was, looking over Newport, astounded by the destruction and the compounding violence. I do not know what I had expected. I was in disbelief that there was even a colony on this forsaken island. Within the houses were countless diaries, countless pleas, countless clues. I could almost hear the echoing of battle, even after it had long passed. Or so I had thought. Man, I don't want countless diaries to read. <laughs> I hope I don't have to read countless diaries. What do we got here? The first of many. After two years, Kray has finally come off the boat in Bresen, returning home at last. Seeing two coaches full of material even before I saw him, I knew for a fact that his expedition was not a failure. At first, I could not place the vibe in the air, but when he saw me, he looked confused. Contemplative and sunken, as if trying to remember who I even was. Raw emotion overtook me, however, and I embraced him before calculated judgment occurred. He did not put his arms around me in return. Of note, he began his embrace. I found a few old books written in Latin with absolutely no business being in the tombs I scoured. A few historical swords and armaments with the same inscriptions on them. But of most particular note, I found a globe, dirty, scarred, and cut up, but a globe of the earth, dated to about the 12th century. I was perplexed. I backed off and saw the tears welling in his eyes. The stagecoach driver behind him was donning a black coat and ash cane. Where is Alan Marsh? I asked. Gray's face twisted in a flurry of emotion. But he ended his silent reply with a mere smile. Dun dun dun! Events have transpired. Now, what's the best way to actually get up there? That's the question. I'm thinking I'm supposed to be following the lantern still. As has always been the case, but I forget too often. Wow, oh, okay, so Newport is actually a lot bigger than I originally thought. It's actually a sizable town here. Well, shit. <laughs> Newport Harbor. I had imagined it much before finally seeing it. But it was then that I realized its scope. A mass of piers, nets, shipyards, storehouses and dockhouses, all to waste, all abandoned. I did not dare venture on the piers themselves, but the adjacent storehouse and reception interested me greatly. Okay, so I guess this is the storehouse and reception. With a note to read, yay! Little new to report this season, Alan Marsh has been rounding up the men to go on an expedition north of here. All the crew of the old Atlantic have been reporting something mighty strange glowing in the distance, there by the smallest reef. I've opted out. I'll stand here in reception and handle any trades we get. 
Funny thing, we ain't seen Grey in a long time now, I reckon. Wonder what the old boy been up to. I think that's it. It's only one page. Okay, now that's invisible wall again. the warehouse I guess where everyone gets a bargain can't see any notes around immediately so we'll head up into the township I guess Newport Colony Wells certainly been quite the hoopla up here. That's quite some uh, interesting lighting going on over there. More gunshots. Evidently, I'm not alone. Okay, so that was behind me. Real confused as to what's actually going on, and those stairs are evidently too slippery for me to climb. And that is some. Oh, don't let him inside. What? Who the hell just spoke to me? That is some attractive smoke, though. Should take some screenshots from my background. <laughs> I find it interesting, Gray, that pockets of resistance were so rare. These creatures fascinate me even still. I wonder what they look like. That sounds like it's going to fall over, so I'm going to keep moving. I find it difficult to relate just how horrifying walking these streets truly was. In every direction was a house. In every room, bodies. In every pit or ditch, bullet casings and puddles of blood and oil and everywhere the smell of ash. The unceasing howling began to drive me mad. How is it, Grey, you found it more rewarding to destroy this colony than to save it? Jesus. So there's something upstairs. That sounds like... <coughs> oh my god, so much smoke in here! Oh, better go upstairs. No, nope, can't go upstairs. Can't open that door either. Is there anything actually here? No. Oh, well, back onto the streets. I found my mind spinning, racing to recount some new archaic memory. I fainted, finding myself then in a dreamlike state. I was now in a desert, travelling up a sand hill over which lay some ancient ruins. Fun. 
Looking straight into the gaping maw of the tomb was astonishing. I did not know what to say to Ray as he asked me again and again what it was. I had no answer for him. His calm words turned to panic as he reflected on the bodies and on their oh, faces. What had they found and what were Ray and I left to bear? I can say now with hindsight that it was more than any human need know. I still do not know what to make of it. Grey is beside me, poring over that damned book. I can only roughly translate the words I see on the side of the peeling leather cover, a phrase much too sinister in suggestion. History of Tigras and the Dawn of Man. The Dawn of Man, eh? Well, that's an interesting subject. <laughs> Follow the lanterns. Not quite as barren as I expected the desert to be. There's still a fair number of trees. Actually, part of an oasis. Yeah, that's quite a thickly forested, if I can use the term forest, in a desert setting. That is quite a lot of trees right there. So where are we now, in Egypt or something? Ugh, this hill is too steep, too tired, I'm just going to go back. Psych! There's only one way, and that is forward. It's the only way I'm ever going to finish this game. Oh look, a shovel! And another note. As Grey and I crawled through the opening in the sunken marble cliff, we found, isolated in the stone, a singular entrance that had been carved up by the Arab excavators. The same men were now dead outside. A foul stench permeated from the shockingly black void and I could feel that we had intruded upon a lethal silence of centuries buried here in the supposedly fictional city of Tigras. Grey was the first to go inside. He pulled out his electric torch and called up to me what he found. There was a sepulchre, he told me first. The lid had been removed, he called later in a worried tone. Finally, he ushered me inside under guidance of his light, and Grey and I met side by side, looking into the yawning opening of that ancient burial site. A mummified corpse of an enormous and tall man, nearly eight feet tall, was wrapped from head to toe in cured red velvet of some kind. His eyes were gone and his face uncovered, a dry, ice-white beard still in tatters. His arms were folded and under them rested an astonishingly well-kept leather manuscript of at least 400 pages. Glyphs, writing, symbols and artifacts were scattered in and out of his tomb. It is too much to recount now, but of value there was near infinite. Gems, pearls, staffs, weaponry. Grey took the manuscript insisting that he and I study it later. The book was quick to identify its owner. Adad, Lord of us all. What have we found?
Right. What's that? A bit of ash trying to escape. Okay, back in Newport. With two paths to choose from. Nope, with one path to choose from. Thank you, Invisible Wall Syndrome. You are the guiding light. <laughs> At that point, I was almost here. Almost outside this very door. Finding your manor. Finding you. Yay! Sprint function increased tenfold. And almost at the end, I hope. Oh, hello, fountain. Gonna take a bath. Teabag my balls and your water supply. So if you're using that for a water supply, that's pretty stupid. So that's a stupid statement to make in the first place. Come out, Grey. I know you're in there. You must account for what you've done. For the horrors you have unleashed on this innocent colony. No one has left but I to face you, Grey. And if you have any sort of spine, you will come out and face me. So be it, Grey. I'm coming inside. Prepare yourself. Let's do this. No, wait, let's stop and read a diary. I do not understand anymore. Life is so vague, so mysterious. I am unsure of the answers we have found, or if we are even asking the right questions. Grey has completed his task of deciphering that ancient manuscript and has achieved absolution in a way no man was ever intended to in mortal life. The answer for every question that exists lies in those texts. And Grey... I do not know what to make of him anymore. His eyes are vacant. The life I fell in love with now long decayed under the root of Adad. He looks at me like I'm no one. Like he is fed up with this world as if he has seen the green pastures of a better reality. All I wish is to hold him in my arms, like we did so long ago, under the chill wind of the Atlantic breeze. I myself have undergone many changes, both subtle and profound, or mentally and psychologically, and admit to altercations with forces and people much too sinister to my liking. But I, I've broken away. I have redeemed myself. And I, I do not think I can save him. I am in fear. Fear of the worst. Fear that he will try something too foolish and too dangerous to rid himself of me. He speaks ceaselessly of returning to that damned colony of Newport endlessly reciting meaningless paraphrases about deities in the waters around it and the profound significance of Adad to them. He wants to enslave them. I have refused to return to that damned island. I would be a fool to do so again. But Gray never takes no for an answer and I worry that Newport will be the death of him. A diary entry. It was a woman's. Why was it I could hear her voice in my head, as if recalled from a distant memory? She mentioned you, Grey. But... Hmm. But him what? Just gonna leave it there? Okay. Time to read another book. Collection of Truths, 1936. All my plans are in ruin and I stand alone against the war I have started. Destruction by the hand of the creatures residing within the Atlantic and around 
Atlantic around us is now Newport's fate, as well as my own. My trust has been as crushed as, New as Newport's has, and I accept with utmost despair that the creatures and Haddad will never uphold the terms we agreed on, agreed upon nearly twenty years ago. On August 5th, 1935, I gave Newport a deal. If they kept me forever rather than sacrifice me to Haddad, they would eventually prosper. Sorry, eternally prosper. I had a feeling in my heart and my mind that the creatures would attack regardless, but attack me? I never suspected such treason. I have retreated here, here to my manor, and am unsure of what my next step should be. Alan Marsh confronted me on the reef. He has always known, I suspect, most of them have, but he is dead now by my own hand. I should never have trusted Haddad or his damned manuscript. I should never have left Prussia. I should never have used Newport as a stepping stone for eternal power promised to me by a lying god. And I will never see Oifa again. <laughs> I resign myself to death. I will go to the south end of Newport, closest to their city, and throw myself into their water. It is the only way to ensure my death. Really? Okay. An entry of yours, dated 1936. A confession. So you do admit your treachery then, Grey? The demons you've dealt with? The horrors you've enacted? Hey look, another umbrella. It's not the fish, it's the umbrella people that's orchestrating this entire thing! Taking the gun. We're going to end this once and for all. If I can get up the stairs. Just can't seem to be able to. Oh no. I have to take this staircase. Is that you upstairs, Gray? Don't think you can hide from me any longer. You will face justice. It's not going to be grey. I, Edgar Grey, accept Except the rights I am Behold, given. Alan, the, the truth, truth I have told you. You, you doubt me. The creatures are here to I, I am Edgar Grey. You will sacrifice. It's not enough. Do not question me. In this colony will burn before they see me gone. Haddad, I pledge my loyalty to you. This cannot be. I refuse to accept. I... I... Hello, Grey. I have a deal for you. Will you listen? What the hell? This is very strange and I'm not quite sure what's going on anymore. There's a monster over there. Just chilling behind a rock. I really wouldn't be ignoring that. I have no idea what's going on anymore. We've gone back in time to 1921, and the monsters. If I give you Newport, will I be able to see her again? Okay, don't like this. Well, well, very interesting. 
think it kind of glitched out on me a, a little bit at the end there. Uh, resulting in the repetition of a couple of scenes. Um, which made it even harder to understand the end, but I think I got it. So this guy was grey the whole time. And, uh... Oifa, or however you pronounce her, her name, somehow died, perhaps, and Grey offered Newport to uh, Haddad and his army of sea beast monster things to bring Oifa back. Or at least that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> seems to make the most sense to me. Um, and if I'm wrong, well, I'd be glad to hear the actual explanation. Regardless, this was very, very fun. It's a very well put together mod. A little twitchy uh, in some cases, which I guess is just due to the uh, fragility of the Crisis engine. Um, is referred to in all the mod instructions but that's okay we seem to have got through this no no sweat there's no big issues that I haven't been able to fix in editing and uh, yeah thoroughly enjoyable thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed that little sidetrack uh, sidetrack series um, it was certainly an interesting experience. It's sort of a weird mix of uh, scratches and amnesia, the dark descent, and crisis, and H.P. Lovecraft, all tossed together into a ball of goodness. So yeah, I'm glad I stumbled across that. It was a a nice little side track from my usual LPs. So yes, once again, I hope you enjoyed that. I will be back with my regularly scheduled LPs soon. And until then, have yourselves a good one. And don't make any deals with ancient sea races. Because it doesn't look like that turns out very well for anyone. <laughs> so I'll see you next time, guys. Have a good one.